Hey y'all, and welcome back to another video. In this video, this is not a tutorial, I'm gonna take a look at one of the games that I've been playing recently. We can talk about it a little bit from a kind of a design perspective, hopefully that's interesting. I'm gonna continue doing tutorials on the channel if that's mainly what you're here for. Feel free to, to check back later on. I'm trying to release a tutorial every week, but I figured these would also be a fun kind of video to do. It's kind of an experiment, we'll see. We'll see if people like it, if I enjoy doing them, but. I've been playing a couple of different games lately and I think they're, it might be fun to talk about them. So the game that I want to talk about today is Dicey Dungeons by Terry Kavanaugh. So this is another game in the kind of roguish, likeish kind of soup of procedurally generated games that we have now. Everybody likes to argue about the term roguelike. I'm just going to use it here. It's a procedurally generated dungeon crawling game. The dungeon in this case is a game show and you are an anthropomorphic dice who has to uh, fight various enemies by rolling dice. So let's take a look at it. I thought it was really, really cool. So this is the title screen here. Here we have uh, Lady Luck, who's kind of the, uh, the bad guy in the game. Here's your dice characters. So let's go ahead and play. Now, one thing that's really worth noting about this game right from the start is that there is some amazing music by Chipsel. Uh, who's a pretty well-known chiptune musician kind of in the game development scene. She has done a terrific job on the music for this. It's kind of kitschy and great. So let's actually just start by playing with the warrior real quick. I don't think I'll play a full run just so we can see some different things, but uh, the warrior is kind of like the basic character. So they've got this fun kind of ha ah, sound effect plus text uh, dialogue boxes, which I actually like a lot just for adding a little like emotional tinge to the dialogue, but then sticking with text, right? It also helps with localization. I think that's a good tip for you game devs out there. If you're thinking about going towards voice acting, doing just this kind of like sound plus text is a pretty good idea. This is a game by Terry Kavanaugh, who was a developer of Super Hexagon super hard geometric kind of time-based puzzle game. This is a very different thing for him. Really, really interesting and fun. So here we have the Space Marine uh, is the enemy. We have two dice. We have this limit break that builds up after we take eight HP of damage. And then we drag these dice into slots. One of the interesting things about the dragging mechanic is I think it's a, it'll be a little bit difficult to adapt to gamepad. Right now, I think gamepad is not supported as far as I can tell, which is gonna make the game difficult to port to other platforms. So I think it may be PC only for a while. But yeah, so here we can do X damage where X is the number of on the dice. And then this combat roll allows us to re-roll a dice. Now, right now we only have this one attack. So obviously we just go to the next turn. These numbered ones allow you to build up an attack over time, so he's building up to do a powerful attack. We want to try to kill him before, which we're not going to be able to do, I don't think. Three. Let's see, he's got 13, yeah, so he's going to hit us for a lot of damage. 10 damage of our 24, pretty powerful attack. Okay, so that brings up the limit break, double the next action, and now we, so we can do 12 damage with the sword and, and win the combat. We got one XP and one gold. The gold you can use to buy new attacks. And then, okay, so we got whip. We do fire damage and we inflict one burn. That means that the dice becomes burning and so that they can't attack without using it. So let's take it. Now we can equip it. I think it auto equips it, which is a nice quality of life thing. These are both big attacks. They won't fit in these small slots. So eventually as you have more stuff in your backpack, you have to kind of decide, okay, I want to mix a big and small attacks that fit into your inventory, your active inventory at any given time. All right. So let's just do this one level and then I'll show you one of the other characters because it's kind of cool. So let's use the, let's use the whip this time. Do six. Now he's got burn one. That's going to burn one of his dice and then we'll do four. We're just going to kill him in one. Okay. So we leveled up, we get a maximum health increase, and we get an extra dice. That will add to the number of dice that we have, and then we go down a floor. Very traditional roguelike dungeon here. They're doing this kind of graph-based dungeon, very similar to Slay the Spire in that regard. Another game that I've been playing a lot and that maybe we'll, we'll talk about. I don't know if I have anything original to say about Slay the Spire that uh, 
you know, Game Maker's Toolkit and Tom Francis and some other people haven't said already, but it's a great, it's a great game that I really enjoy. And so we've got some enemies. This allows us to buy, this is a shop, right? This will allow us to restore health. And then we have the dungeon. Okay, so what I'm gonna do actually is go back to title and I'm going to make a new game and let's look at the robot, right? So this is a kind of a cool way that we can iterate on a mechanic. So here we have this thing where instead of rolling the dice, we do this thing called calculate and then it rolls the dice and builds up to a target. It's basically like blackjack or 21. We can't exceed nine. And so there's a kind of a risk reward mechanic as we go further. So let's calculate. So four, so now we, if we roll a five or a six, we'll go over. Let's use our plasma blaster to deal four damage. Now I'm gonna calculate, okay, eight. So if I get one more, I can do two damage. If I go over, yeah it errors and I lose the chance to do anything else, but in that case, I didn't have any other actions available. Okay, he's gonna cast a shield. Okay, two, five. All right, so now I wanna use these before I risk going further. Let's use this two to deal one damage, and then let's use the plasma blaster to deal three, and then calculate again, okay. We'll drop that on here and then we errored out, right? We, we busted in blackjack terms, right? So I thought this was a really cool tweak on the mechanic, right? Like changing the dice rolling, so now the dice rolling have an element of risk and reward. And I think this is like the really interesting thing about this game. It's quite simple in the regard of rolling dice and then assigning them, but it adds a lot of possibility for a lot of variation and different ideas. So I'm not gonna go super exhaustive on this game. I just figured I would give it a quick, uh, a quick look and show it to you. Uh, let's see if we can beat this guy and go down one level uh, before we end the video. But yeah, I encourage you to check it out if you're interested in game design. I think it's pretty cool. Oh, and this is an important run, right? So the auto roll is this guy's kind of like super attack, which guarantees a jackpot, right? So we can see the jackpot. So if you hit the exact number without going over, then you get to choose between a lucky shot, five damage, regenerate three health, or one more roll, right? Let's use the lucky shot to finish this enemy. Okay. And let's get a, uh, increase the jackpot range this turn. So, and this is the other cool thing, right? The dice can kind of modify the rules of the little mini game that we're playing with the jackpot, right? So in this case, we can add to the jackpot range, which is actually pretty useful. Uh, okay, so that's been added. So let's go fight the wolf puppy. I also really like the art style on this. It's, it's quite simple, but very attractive and unique. You know, it's distinct, it's not generic. It's got a lot of personality. So let's calculate one. Okay, so we can increase the jackpot range. Let's not do that yet. Okay, now we might wanna increase the jackpot range. Let's go ahead and deal four damage first. Let's use our one to increase the jackpot range. Target eight or nine. Let's calculate, okay. Probably gonna bust out, but let's try it. Whoop, lucky us. This is the other fun thing, right? This actually makes the core mechanic a little more exciting and fun, right? Am I gonna bust? Am I gonna go over a little gambling type of mechanic? But it, I really love the idea of embedding this little mini game into the normal game loop. Um, all right, let's go lucky shot. And enter. All right. And all of these guys have the same type of uh, dice-based attacks. All right, let's go ahead, let's cut it. Oh, bad decision there. Of course, no, we shouldn't have done that. Roll the six, okay. Oh, I could have won that. Oh, am I gonna die? That'd be embarrassing. Okay, let's auto roll. I'm gonna regenerate, get myself out of danger. Now, let's go ahead and do two damage and then do four damage and, and beat this guy. Okay, we're gonna level up. Now this gives us two extra CPU, which gives us more range on our jackpot. The higher, raises the limit of the jackpot. Okay, go down. All right, maybe we'll do one more battle. 
Okay, five damage, that's good, right? And you notice the limits on these are interesting, right? This only takes odd dice, that one only goes up to five, right? You can upgrade them to raise the limits, which is also interesting. Uh, let's put this here. 10, okay, let's just increase the odds, because, woo, look at that, all right, cool. Ah, so I increased the odds into the range, so then I was on the jackpot, so that was cool. Now let's go ahead and lucky shot. We got like your kind of fantasy game status effect, poison deals damage over time. There's also curse, which will cause one of your attacks to kind of fail and malfunction. All right, let's go ahead and four. Let's use this. Increase the jackpot range, 10 or 11, bust. Okay. But yeah, I think if you're interested in game design, this is definitely a game worth checking out. I also like this idea of combining dice. It's almost board game-like, right? But I don't think you could really do this in a bo traditional board game format, but combining some of the language of dice, right? Which is something people are already familiar with. And some of these mechanics like busting out in blackjack, right? Pulling in some of these other mechanics from other types of games and putting them together, I think is really cool. Uh, let's auto roll. Let's go ahead and lucky shot. Deal two, deal four. Mm, I'm not gonna be able to kill. Almost. Lots of poison on me right now, okay. Back in danger, let's go ahead and, let's see, you know what, I'm actually going to, I think I should be able to, I'm not gonna bust out, like, no, I won't bust out yet. Okay, so let's go for that. And then let's increase the jackpot, I don't think, the, let's increase the jackpot range and see if that gets me. No, 10, damn. All right, let's just win. There we go. So we'll leave it there. It's a cool game in the sense that it's always offering you some interesting decisions, right? How to assign the dice, you know, in the case of the robot, should I roll again? Where to move around on the map? The map element is quite simple, right? But there are some decisions, which enemy should I challenge first? Should I go for the health? Could I skip this path and go to the exit? The runs are really short, which is a characteristic of this type of roguelike game. The runs are really short, which is a characteristic of this roguelike game that I really like, being a, a busy middle-aged man as I am. I don't have time to run to the next town or spend 40 minutes watching a cutscene or whatever is going on in AAA games these days. These type of compact, bite-sized experiences with a lot of interesting decision-making moment to moment are just really perfect for me, kind of with my lifestyle. So yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying this and I recommend that you check it out. If you like the video, uh, if you like this idea of talking about games, let me know. Could I do more of these? I don't know. Uh, I, I think it's kind of fun. It's a little less sort of structured than the tutorial stuff, but I kind of enjoy it. So let me know if you, if you want to see more or drop a dislike if you say, no, only tutorials. That's fine too. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.